when you run a gear train or a v-belt drive or a roller chain drive all kinds of drives usually you have an electric motor that is running the, the thing here's a cool looking uh, electric motor down in the utility tunnels under the lcc campus typical motor motors look like this inside there's a lot of copper windings in there and on the outside of the motor every motor has a nameplate and it lists the specifications for this motor very clearly when you specify a motor like let's say you're designing something or other and you list this motor on your bill of material and maybe you make a specification control sheet for this motor you need to specify these various attributes of the motor because there are lots of choices do you want AC or DC well if you're in a manufacturing site running a piece of equipment it's probably AC do you want single phase or three phase what speed do you want what horsepower um, about voltage, if you're in a manufacturing facility uh, running ordinary equipment and, and not, uh, not DC servo motors on, on uh, fine things, but big, big heavy equipment, you're going to be using 480 volt three phase motors. And in, um, there's an optional PowerPoint that that talks about why we have three phase power I won't go through it because we do also cover that in electrical drafting class and in sustainable buildings class and you need to specify is it a 60 Hertz motor because it's in the US or is it a 50 Hertz because it's in Mexico or Europe what kind of enclosure and frame size and mounting and all of that so what type of enclosure the enclosure means this housing that goes around those windings in there and there are three basic types of enclosure the most common is called open drip proof we call that ODP for short open drip proof is the most economical motor and indoors it's it's pretty good it's drip proof and it has um, openings that's why it's called open it has openings down on the bottom side um, that let air flow through but on the top side it's covered so it's drip proof if you are running a motor outdoors or in a dusty or dirty environment you'll need a TEFC which stands for totally enclosed fan cooled if if you need your motor to be totally enclosed because you can't have water splashing into it and dirt falling into it you'll have to have a way to cool the motor because as as this thing turns these windings get hot so if you don't have open vents you need a fan and uh, this is a cutaway view of a TEFC motor so you can see on the back end of the motor here's a fan there are some vent openings it's all enclosed and um, water can't get in there if you work in a hazardous environment around flammable or explosive materials then you need the next grade of housing which is explosion proof um, flour is explosive so if you work at a flour milling plant you will be using explosion proof motors now your role as a designer might include designing and drawing motor mounts here's a, a motor inside the central plant at the LCC campus with a cool looking motor mount here's a simple one on a, a pump structure and as we looked at previously you'll need to make the motor mounts adjustable I think we looked at these guys before now when you're designing your motor mounts and figuring out where your shivs will go and so forth you look up the sizes using what's called the motor frame 
The motor frame is standardized by NEMA, and NEMA stands for National Electrical Manufacturers Association. So, well, let's just look at some examples. This is a clean looking chart that I think you will find easier to use than the next one, which looks like this. This is out of a manufacturer's catalog, and the, this catalog gives the frame sizes up above and the motor dimensions down below, which is why you might find it handy. So let's say you have a 10 horsepower, 1800 RPM motor. What size is it? The frame size, the NEMA frame size for a 10 horsepower, 1800 RPM following um, across and down, we find out that it has a 215T frame. Uh, let me just say that U frames are old. I think they were used from 1952 to 1964. And beginning in 1964, NEMA started using T frames. But some charts give the old U frames also because there are a lot of plants that have really old motors in them. We're using T though, because that's the modern size. So a 10 horsepower, 1800 RPM has a 215 frame size, 215T frame size. What about a bigger motor, 25 horsepower, 1200 RPM? Following across 25 horsepower, 1200 RPM, that has a 324T frame size. Here's this cleaner chart that's easier to use. Can you see why? So a 10 horsepower, 1800 RPM, 215T, that's really clear. 25 horsepower, 1200 RPM, 324T, that's really clear. I didn't put this into a handout for you, um, but you can see it on the PowerPoint slides. And once you, once you find what the frame size is, then you use the frame size to look up the dimensions. That's the way this system works. And you use those dimensions for things like uh, making your motor mount with the bolt holes the right spacing, um, figuring out what height the motor is so you know where to put your shivs and belt guards, looking up the shaft diameter, and so on and so forth. So for example, here's our 10 horsepower, 1800 RPM motor with a 215T frame. Here's a different motor chart that you might find easier to read. I'm giving you, sorry, let me back up. I'm giving you this one and this one and this one in PDF handouts. So 215T frame size, uh, here are some dimensions from the picture up above, and all these dimension locations are labeled with letters of the alphabet. Um, notice on this chart, some dimensions are specific to a frame size, like these are. Some dimensions, like these that are, appear to be floating out in the middle, apply to several frame sizes. That's why they're floating out there. This is a handout from a different manufacturer. Uh, you might find this chart is easier to read. I do. The one thing it does not have is the diameter of the enclosure. So, this Baldor motor chart has dimension P, and dimension P is the diameter of that housing. So I think you have a question in your quiz where you look up the diameter. You'll need to use this Baldor chart to look that up, but you might want to use the York chart for the other numbers because it's just easier to look at. I want to point out something about the mounting holes. And you would use these mounting hole dimensions if you were designing or specifying a motor mount. 
So looking at the end view of the motor, uh, so you were looking at the shaft there, notice that dimension E goes from the center of the motor to one bolt hole. So if you want to know how far apart are those bolt holes side to side, it's not 4.25, it's twice that much. So 4.25 plus 4.25 is 850. You have to watch out for that. However, 2F, uh, for some reason NEMA has helpfully glop the two dimensions together, so according to these pictures, 2F is the spacing from the back hole to the front hole. There is the 2F. The 2F dimension is 7, and you can just go with that. Every motor manufacturer's chart does it this way. Uh, don't ask me why, <laughs> but they do. Uh, and then let me just show you that these handouts are PDFs. So here is the PDF from the catalog that gives you the NEMA frame size and the dimensions down below. Here is the PDF from Baldor that's harder to read maybe, but it does give you the diameter of the enclosure. And then here is the chart from York Motors, which does not have the enclosure diameter, but it's easier to read. So there are three PDFs for you to download.